Douglas Bader was a British fighter pilot who was born way back in 1910. Competitive and highly driven, he was a natural on the stick and soon find himself flying for the Royal Air Force. And when the Second World War broke out, he became a Spitfire pilot and a leading figure in the Battle of Britain, eventually rising to the rank of Wing Commander, where he chalked up more than 20 air-to-air -air kills before getting shot down over France. Despite getting captured by the Germans, he made a number of escape attempts and proved to be such a pain in the arse for them that he was eventually sent to Colditz Castle, the most high security facility in all of Europe. And when the war ended in 1945, he was given the honour of leading 300 aircraft that flew over London for the victory celebrations. Oh yeah, and he did all of this despite losing both of his legs and almost dying in a horrific plane crash a decade earlier. He would eventually go on to write a book about his experiences, and naturally it wasn't long before a movie adaptation was in the works. Reach for the Sky, starring Kenneth Moore as Douglas Bader, is the 1956 movie that chronicles his life, and since I've always been a bit of a sucker for old British war movies, I figured it was time to take a look. So get your beer warm and your upper lips stiff, because we're going old school with this one, boys. The movie kicks off in the late 1920s, with Bader joining the RAF for the first time. He's young, highly competitive, driven and reckless, but despite a few reprimands from his instructors along the way, he proves to be a talented pilot and soon earns himself a commission. Unfortunately, his reckless need to constantly show off and prove himself eventually gets the better of him when he tries to do some dodgy low-level aerobatics and totally fucks it up, crashing his plane and almost getting killed in the process. His injuries are so severe that he ends up getting both his legs amputated, which naturally doesn't go down too well with him, and he's left facing up to the rest of his life as a cripple. But slowly, his determination to get back on his feet, quite literally, gets him started on the long road to rehabilitation. He painstakingly learns to walk again with a pair of artificial legs, he takes up golf as a way of playing competitive sports, and even manages to pass his flying exams again. But despite his best efforts, the Air Force won't let him fly again, because they can't see past his disability, and rather than take on a humiliating desk job, he eventually retires to civilian life, where his brash and domineering personality doesn't go down well at all. All seems pretty much hopeless for Bader, until the outbreak of the Second World War gives him the second chance he's been looking for. The Air Force are by now desperate for anyone with flying experience, and despite his disability, he's eventually able to talk himself into a command. Nice one, Doug. Unfortunately, his new posting isn't exactly the pick of the bunch. He's been given a group of undisciplined, demoralised Canadian pilots to lead into battle with broken down planes that can barely get into the air. And just like everyone else, the first thing they see when they meet him is what he's missing, not who he is. And so, just like everyone else who tries to stand in his way, Bader takes the problem head on with a daring aerobatic display that's eerily similar to the one that almost killed him ten years earlier, proving without doubt that he's got what it takes to lead them into battle. And as it turns out, they don't have long to wait. With the Battle of Britain raging and the Germans poised to invade, Bader and his squadron are thrown straight into the firestorm, where he proves to be an aggressive and highly capable commander. The more kills he racks up, the more respect he earns, and the more squadrons are put under his commands. Eventually, they're even able to take the fight to the enemy, and by the following year, he's battling his way over northern France. But all of that comes to an end when a mid-air collision forces him to bail out over German territory, where he's soon captured and thrown in a POW camp. But even that isn't enough to stop him, and he makes a number of escape attempts over the next few years, determined to get back to the action at any cost. When I think of films and their ability to represent the mood, tone and national character of a country, I think Reach for the Sky is a perfect example of the British wartime spirit. Bader, the scrappy underdog that everyone underestimates, who refuses to give in despite the odds being against him, and ultimately perseveres through sheer resilience, determination and force of will, is a neat little personification of what the country went through in World War II. He's portrayed as a complex and decidedly flawed character, a born fighter and a natural competitor who's in his element when he has an opponent to test himself against, but gets quickly bored and directionless when he doesn't. His arrogance and self-confidence almost costs him everything, and while his long and painful rehabilitation doesn't exactly humble him, it definitely gives him a bit more perspective and maturity. The fact that he makes a conscious decision to repeat the same stunt that almost killed him in order to win over the respect of the men he's going to be leading into battle, instead of just to show off and impress people, speaks volumes about his personal growth and his 
bravery. And hats off to Kenneth Moore for his performance here. As far as I can tell, he was better known for playing breezy, light-hearted matinee roles rather than driven, intense characters like Bader, but I think he does a good job of capturing the man's fierce, competitive, overbearing nature. A man who was as much of a problem for his own side as he was for the enemy, whose solution to most problems is to simply bulldoze his way through it with sheer willpower. By his own admission, the real Douglas Bader was a complete dick to anyone who got in his way, and his habit of swearing like a drunken sailor while in combat clearly wasn't going to get past the censors back in 1956. But I think Moore successfully manages to capture the spirit of the guy, if not the exact reality. Apparently he considered it one of the best performances of his entire career, and I'm not inclined to argue. Old 1950s war movies aren't exactly fertile ground for progressive political themes and ideas, but if you're inclined to look for them here, then Reach for the Sky actually has a pretty solid and forward-thinking message about how we view people with disabilities, our inclination to judge a book by its cover and see limitations rather than potential. The fact that movies were dealing with ideas like this almost seven decades ago is okay in my book. Believe it or not, we didn't just invent social causes in 2015. Ultimately, despite some slightly stodgy 1950s dialogue and air combat sequences that were clearly limited by the technology of the time, I actually think Reach for the Sky holds up pretty well even today, delivering an inspiring story about overcoming personal loss and trauma with a compelling and heroic protagonist that you can't help but root for. And if you're interested in exploring a bygone age of filmmaking, then I think you could do a lot worse than this little gem of a film. Anyway. That's all I've got for today. Go away now.